for those who don't know me, I'm Anja Lunze, partner in Taylor Wessing's Munich office, uh, where I mainly deal with patent litigation and pharmaceutical and biotech cases. And so welcome to our talk on compulsory licenses in Germany. Yeah, first question, why do we focus on Germany today? Um, well, different to other countries, uh, we have recent case law from the Federal Court of Justice on compulsory licensing uh, between competitors that is worth to be considered. And in addition, we have a statutory provision on governmental use orders also. We will look at these two tools uh, of forced use, and their conditions and also in their limitations. We will in particular, focus, particular discuss whether such forced use will actually help to ease the manufacturing and supply shortage of vaccines in the current pandemic. And in the end, we will also have a short look at the current political discussion of a potential waiver of patents because of the pandemic. So what kind of forced use uh, for ensuring public health do we have in Germany? Well, the first option provided by our Patent Act is the governmental use order that you can see on the left-hand side of the slide. And that is uh, the administrative route uh, as it is ordered by the Federal Ministry of Health or a subordinate authority. And it can be ordered either to a governmental body or to a third party, uh, means a private company. And of course, the order in favor of a private company will certainly be the only possible way when the manufacture of highly complex vaccines is concerned, because you just need the facilities and the experience. So on the left hand side, the governmental use order is yeah, it's the administrative route. It is ordered by the Federal Ministry of Health. It must be in the interest of public welfare. And the Infection Protection Act that has been uh, revised last year due to the pandemic says explicitly that the COVID-19 pandemic is a case of public welfare. And in case of such use order, the reasonable remuneration or royalty is paid by the government. On the right hand side, um, the compulsory license is a tool for competitors, uh, pharmaceutical companies. <clears throat> and it is issued by the Federal Patent Court and up in appeal by the Federal Court of Justice. And it is ordered up in request by a competitor. The competitor must before have tried unsuc uns unsuccessfully to get a license from the patent owner. And the grant of the compulsory license must be in public interest. In this case, the reasonable remuneration is to be paid by the licensee. So can you switch the slide, please? Let's now have a closer look at the governmental use order. Uh, as it is an administrative measure, there are strict limitations of the order. It is uh, limited to the time period in which actually supply shortage of COVID-19 drugs and vaccines persists. If the use is granted to a third private party, any commercial use is forbidden. And there's a very old case law requiring that. However, it is completely unclear what this means. So even if um, the private company would uh, manufacture at a cost price, it still acts in a commercial manner. It makes money, it will benefit from being present on the market and from the marketing effect. So there's a big question mark here. What is meant by that? Um, as any measure limiting pro property rights, uh, the use order must be proportionate. This means it must be suitable, necessary and equitable. So a milder remedy would, for example, be a contractual agreement between the government and the patentee, as well as a compulsory license uh, between the patentee and the competitor. And this would have to precede a governmental use order, which is just the last thing possible. In any event, due to the administrative nature of the order, the patentee must be heard before. Um, the order is to be set aside independent of the time period as soon as the conditions for granting the order uh, cease to exist. For example, if further medicines come onto the market and there's no, short, no shortage anymore. 
Coming to the next slide, um, what are the remedies that the patentee could take against such order? Well, against the order as such, the patentee could go to the administrative court. And here it is important to know that there is no suspensive effect of the legal remedy. So the patentee will have to file or should file an additional motion to order the suspensive effect according to the German Act on Administrative Procedure. And against the calculation of the reasonable remuneration, um, civil courts are competent. So coming now on the next slide to the compulsory license. Um, for getting a compulsory license, the competitor must sue for such license at the Federal Patent Court. The competitor must previously have tried to unsuccess or unsuccessfully attempted within a reasonable period of time to obtain a license from the patent proprietor on reasonable commercial terms. So as usually, uh, as you will know, always discussion about what is reasonable uh, with regard to time and commercial terms. So this is finally to be decided by the Federal Patent Court. And there seems to be some tendency in that if there is public interest, then uh, also uh, the, the first criterion is, is approved, while when the public interest is denied, uh, the Federal Patent Court was also very strict on this reasonable effort. Um, second criterion and the more important one is the public interest. The public interest must dictate the grant of the compulsory license. And according to the case law, this means that it must treat, if it is necessary to treat serious illnesses and if the competitor's product has therapeutic characteristics that the drugs available on the market do not possess, or not in the same degree, or when its use avoids undesirable side effects, then a compulsory license can be granted. However, it cannot, on the other hand, be granted when the public interest can be satisfied by substituting other essentially identical drugs. So there's also always a big discussion about yeah, what is available on the market and is this comparable or not? So let's have a look on the next slide to the case law that we have on public interest. Um, four years ago, the Federal Court of Justice decided in the case HIV drug for a compulsory license in favor of the med medicament Raltegravir. This is a medicament to treat HIV disease. And as a background, it's important to know that uh, yeah, HIV is always a combination therapy of at least three or more uh, drugs because there is a high risk of resistance to single active ingredients. So a wide selection of available drugs is helpful for the physician. Um, Raltegravir was approved for some patient groups like children and pregnant women. Um, while the patent proprietor's comparable drug, which was the Lutegravir, was not. So in this case, the court expert, the, the court appointed expert, confirmed that there are advantages of Raltegravir for specific patient groups, also for patients with multiple pre-existing conditions, and therefore granted a compulsory license. There was a discussion in, in the litigation about whether the compulsory license can be granted to a limited extent, which is in theory possible. So for example, to grant a compulsory license just for women, uh, pregnant women and children. Um, but the Court of Justice found, well, there is no clear criterion to delimit this in practice. So it granted actually a full uh, compulsory license for all patients. In the second case, Alirocumab, uh, regarding a cholesterol lowering drug, um, the public interest was denied. In this case, the drugs had the same mechanism of action. And they were both biologic drugs. And the court found that, yeah, the, 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 the license seeker, which was Sanofi, had not sufficiently demonstrated that its product Praluent had fewer adverse reactions, especially a lower mortality rate than the patent proprietor's product. 
um, the background was that there was that just a study with around about 20, 25 patients, and the court said, well, this is not statistically relevant. Um, if you want to, to read more about this, uh, I have written a commentary on this uh, case, um, which you can found, find on our website. <clears throat> It's also interesting to know that in the, in the first case, uh, just a final remark on that, uh, in the first case where the compulsory license was granted, the patent was revoked later on by the European Patent Office. And nevertheless, um, the license fee had to be paid for the time during which the, um, the compulsory license was used. So coming now to the practical limitations. Um, we have seen so far the legal options for a forced use. And compulsory licenses so far have been used as a defense tool against infringement actions. Um, the situation in the pandemic is different. Um, and there are some major practical limitations uh, to a forced use uh, in, 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 in the present situation. First of all, um, forced use could only be applied for granted patents. So there is no precautional compulsory license or governmental use order. So for recently achieved inventions, just think about the newly uh, developed COVID-19 vaccines, uh, the relevant patent applications will just have been applied for and not yet even have been published. So no one actually knows yet what is in the patents. And well, on the other side, there's also no injunctive relief as long as there is no granted patent, but only backward damages uh, in case the patent is granted later on. Secondly, and more importantly, yeah, what about know-how transfer? There are no compulsory measures on know-how. Everybody in the industry knows that you cannot just manufacture vaccines just based on what is written in some patents, uh, provided you already know what is in the patents. So you will need manufacturing know-how, the manufacturing facilities, years of experience and also the people qualified uh, for doing so. So the question may be asked if the legal allowance of making use of a patent, if it will not enable others to manufacture a vaccine because the relevant know-how is missing, is then a forced use suitable at all? Is it then not inappropriate because it will not help to solve the problem of supply shortage? In my view, it is not. The third problem in real life on the next slide is the regulatory law. So in any case, a marketing authorization will be necessary for the company that will profit from the compulsory license or the governmental body that will be granted a use order. So here again, there is no corresponding compulsory measure uh, provided by the regulatory law. So we need to have to differentiate between three situations. In case of a newly developed medicinal product, where there is still data exclusivity and market exclusivity, um, there is no possibility without the cooperation of the marketing authorization holder um, to, to make use of a compulsory license or governmental use order. So these are just useless. In the second case, where data and market exclusivity already expired while the patent protection still exists, it would be possible to get a generic marketing authorization already, um, but still tests and trials for approval are needed. So um, the compulsory license or governmental use order might help to justify the use of the patent, but still it's not immediately possible. In the third case, in case of a new use of known medicines where pen protection for the first use already expired, um, usually a lot of generic medicines are already on the market with their own marketing authorizations. And here it is arguable that the compulsory license or governmental use order might justify an off-label use. So coming now on the next slide to the hot topic of the current political discussion, uh, would a waiver of patents make sense on a global level to cope with the challenges of the pandemic? So there is 
a global political discussion on whether a general waiver of patents could solve the global shortage of shortage uh, of uh, manufacturing capacities and supply. And the legal argument is that there could be a waiver of Section 5 of the TRIPS, um, which is uh, part of the WTO agreement. So if there would be a waiver, the WTO members, the World Trade Organization members, would not be obliged to provide for a global minimum standard of IP protection to nevertheless have access to global trade. However, it is to be noted that TRIPS also includes to, the possibility for, for all countries and WTO members to provide for compulsory licenses in their national law. So there already is a sufficient flexible tool. And as explained in my talk, just like compulsory license and governmental use orders, a general waiver of patents will not be able to overcome regulatory approval requirement, as well as the practical lack of know-how. So if you want to read more, um, <clears throat> I can recommend uh, the position paper of AIPPI of the Standard Pharma and Biotech Committee of AIPPI, uh, where I'm a member of. And also a very valuable read is the position paper of the Max Planck Institute, um, where you, there is a long opinion and also a very short a summary of 10 arguments, um, if you want to know more about that. So in summary, the take home messages of my talk are, we have two types of forced use in Germany, the governmental use order and the compulsory license. Um, and while the grant of a license under patent law is well possible, um, there are strong restrictions under regulatory law depending from the kind of the medicinal product, whether it is newly developed, whether data and market exclusivity already expired, or whether it is a new use of a known medicine uh, where there already is a generic market for the known use. Um, there are no compulsory measures on know-how. So, um, no comparison measures on newly authorized drugs will be possible because they are just not yeah, equitable. <clears throat> and in summary, well, the collaboration of the patent owner and the marketing authorization owner is key. It does not work without them. So the patent law alone, without know-how transfer and without the regula regulatory law, cannot solve capacity issues. And consequently, a waiver of patents will not raise the number of available medicines. So coming to the end, thank you very much for your attention and let me know if you have any questions. <clears throat>